Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. I am Pastor Brent, and we had another prayer meeting tonight. It's a rainy night out there right now, but we are thankful for the ability to gather on um, Zoom, and our youth group is meeting downstairs as well. Some of our other ministries are already started to take their summer break, uh, but we are thankful for the time that we can be together. And I just want to uh, ask if you uh, were part or where you were last week when we had that very powerful storm that came through. I was coming from uh, doing some blood work and I was heading to the hospital to meet up with my wife for a doctor visit that she had. And and we were, uh, I just couldn't get there because as I started to drive, the rain was just too much and the wind. And I just had to sit there and, and think about how powerful things are around me. And I just, these, these verses that I'm going to share uh, relate to that. Uh, but the other thing, I hope your Memorial Day weekend went well. I remember hearing the uh, weather report and one of the meteorologists said, well, two out of three days isn't bad. And for many people, Memorial Day itself was a washout, but they had different ways of moving some of the celebrations inside and, and do their best with it. But when I think about two out of three, uh, our family was together for a, a family celebration. And Saturday was great. Actually, Friday night was great. Saturday was great. Sunday was great. And then on Monday, we had a little accident that that kind of put a damper on things. And it, it got kind of overwhelming because we were together because we've been going through a lot. And it was just a good time to remind ourselves that there's a lot we have to be thankful for. So I want to share these verses based on that. And uh, let me first open it a prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the fact that your word speaks to us in a timely manner. When we really need you, you reveal yourself. And I pray that you would bless us as we look into these verses and find them as encouragement. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How much is too much? That's the question that I'm calling this. Isaiah 43, 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. My first question that I see in verse, what makes waters feel like rivers? Someone tonight said, well, when the current gets very strong, when it really, really beats on you. And you, you don't always know what's coming. Somebody said, what about an undertow? There's uh, not just the current that's hitting you, but then the things that might be dragging you through and, and taking you in. Um, there's a time when water gets overwhelming. Uh, water itself can be very refreshing, but then so much can come and it feels like a river. And again, when I was driving from my blood work to, to the hospital, even though the water had, had stopped raining as much, uh, the roads were still very much a, a lot of water wings as people were driving through them. And a couple of places I said, I wonder if this is a little too, too low for this water, whether I should even be driving through it. So think about what does this represent to you, though? When do you feel like, oh, I'm getting wet. Now I feel like I'm going to go under. What kind of things have been happening in your life? Do you hear the promise here? God promises to be with you, that you do not have to be overwhelmed by whatever it is that you're experiencing. And then the last part of that verse, what makes fire feel like a consuming flame? Again, fire can be wonderful. Uh, we had a birthday cake as part of our celebration and put candles on the cake. That's wonderful. Sometimes you feel like there's too many candles, but that's all right. But then we we also had a wood burning fire where uh, we uh, a stove that was helped making make us pizza. Uh, fire can be very wonderful, but if it gets out of hand, it can feel like it's going to consume us. It's going to be a consuming flame. And again, God promises you won't be burned. You might get a little too hot, but you won't be burned, and you will not be consumed. And the reason you won't be overwhelmed, burned, uh, or consumed is because God promises to be with you. One other thing that happened after the weekend, we the next day, and we were kind of picking up the pieces with everything that had happened. And 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 uh, my neighbor was getting the parking pad done. And uh, the gentleman who was doing the work came over and said, if our trucks are bothering you at all, you let us know. I thought that was very nice. And I said, hey, what do you charge? And he had, a, he had a good price, and and I've been wondering whether I should redo my parking pad. And he said, yeah, you don't even have to dig yours up. Yours is, is strong enough. You, you can see where it's falling apart. But 
I don't have to put a new base down and I could do it for this price. And I said, let's go. Well, as we're talking to him, he's a man of faith. And he talked to us about the different things that he's learned in his business and the things he's learned in his relationship with the Lord. And one of the things he said, it's easy to feel like you're going to get overwhelmed, but live today and trust that God has tomorrow. And so it was just neat uh, two different times. I felt he was sharing a devotional just for me and it was just a blessing. So this verse, that guy, those are things that remind us that the Lord is there. But there's one other verse I want to share. Jeremiah 31, 25, for I will satisfy the weary soul and every languishing soul I will replenish. What a great promise. What truly satisfies the soul? The soul was immaterial. It's, it's, it's created by God, breathed into it, nostrils God did with Adam and the man became a living soul. It's not that we're God, but it, he gives us a part of something that represents him. We're made in his image. And I don't even really know what the soul is. We talk about it in different ways. So who, how can I find satisfaction on my own? I need to go to the one who created the soul. Only God can, can satisfy, can satisfy my soul when I'm weary. And then this idea, who is the only one that can replenish the soul? We feel like you're languishing, uh, hey, I'll go watch a TV show, try to laugh it off or entertainment or sports. No, that 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 may distract me for a period of time. But if I really want to have my soul refreshed and replenished, I need to turn to the one who created that soul and the one who understands my soul more than I do myself. I hope that this is encouraging to you tonight. If you do not know Jesus as your savior, it's not going to make sense. But if you can agree with me that you're a sinner and that you need a savior for your sin and that Jesus is the only one who died on the cross for you and rose from the dead, you'd call upon him as your savior. Then you will understand what was lacking in your soul and that Jesus can come, first of all, save you. And then through his spirit, he can replenish the, the emptiness and, and the languishing of your soul. I pray that that uh, message resonates with you. And I don't usually ask that, but if, if you know someone who needs some encouragement, send them these two verses. You can send them the YouTube link that you're watching or just, just share the verses with them. Let me close in prayer. Father, I thank you. I pray for everyone who gets a chance to hear this, that they would know that there is a Savior, Savior sent by the Creator who made us a living soul. And I pray for anything that's overwhelming us, I pray that we would know that you will satisfy us in our weariness and you will replenish our soul when we are languishing. Help us to know that you have a plan. We know that you're with us today and you already have a plan for tomorrow and we can trust you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.